Okay, it is finally the day. My new Golf R is here. We're at Lindsay Volkswagen, just outside of Dulles, Virginia, so Northern Virginia. And here is my actual car. Now, this isn't our first time seeing this car. We actually had a chance to see this at Port when we went up there to Baltimore with Paul and Nate. This has actually been a long time coming. I drove the Mark 8 R way back in April of last year, had a killer time in the mountains, drove it. That was a DSG Eurospec car. Mine is a six speed manual, which I'm super hyped about. But last year at Wookiees, I also got to ride around in that same Eurospec Mark 8. This right here is Tanner and I in that white Mark 8, taken from the back of my yellow Mark 7.5. Like I mentioned, this has been a long time coming. This car actually landed in the US in that port at Baltimore on November 5th. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna peel off all the stickers and stuff on it. We're gonna PDI it with Rad up in the shop. Then we're gonna drive it because I, even though I got to drive it at port, it was in transport mode. And you can only drive 25 miles an hour. What we should also do before we go PDI it is we should actually make sure this is mine. All right, here we go. Is the sticker still there? Oh yeah. That's the one. So now we gotta pull it around and do those things I said we were gonna do. Very bouncy. In addition to going through the PDI process on the car and taking off all the stickers and all of that, I have a couple mods that we're gonna put on, and I'm wondering, if I put these mods on before I sign the paperwork, does that mean they're covered under warranty because they came with the car? Oh, also a couple things before we like get through the process and, and take all these stickers off. The guys at Port signed my hood cover, which I gotta tell you, that might be the thing I'm most excited about, except there's one more thing that I'm over the moon about, so come back this way. We'll go through all the features and cool stuff on the car. And if you're wondering what my thoughts are on the um, user interface and everything, I'm saving that for when I have more seat time in the car instead of just saying that it's terrible or flip side, saying that it's awesome. We're gonna go into detail on that and really do a heavy comparison to my Mark 7 and So I opened the trunk and my guys at port had this in there. And let me show you what this is. This is freaking cool. I'm, I mean, right? This is all the stuff that comes in the car when it's brand new. When I PDI'd my Mark 7, it was in a full like body condom, which was awesome. Unfortunately, they don't do that anymore. They just do the top side wrap and the coating on it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's here. And I have to say like the pictures and video, like the car photographs really poorly. It videos really poorly because when you see it in person, even with the goofy wrapping and stuff on it, man, it's cool. It's really cool. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. Here we go. Caution. Do not enter. How close do I gotta pull up? Can I do burnouts? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Now it's time to PDI. That's rad. He's gonna be PDIing it. He says hi. He's gonna be doing the heavy lifting. I'm just gonna be watching. This is all the goodies that they put in at Port, which we saw in Baltimore. So like a front tag, which thankfully Lindsay doesn't put front tags on. I'll save this, but it sure as heck isn't going on the car. Wheel caps. Remember I mentioned on the keys? That's the R-badged key. I'm probably not gonna put these on because I have the key cover somewhere. Front tag, that can essentially just go in the garbage. Speaking of things that go in the garbage, owner's manual. Don't need that. Center caps, carpet floor mats, and monster mats, or whatever they call them today. And a couple other things too, first aid kit, Roadside kit, this thing, the little, yeah, the cargo, cargo blocks. Just kidding, we can't throw the owner's manual away. We need it. It's my cape now. That one guy said he was gonna teach me how to fight today, teach me how to box, so. 
<laughs> Man! Um, so the PDI process, kind of as I think about it, is basically you bring the car in, you set the radio presets, you run through the Volkswagen checklist, print a battery test, run a scan, put the caps and stuff on, torque the wheels, set the tire pressure, and you're done. Rad is actually following the checklist step by step, which is super awesome and super appreciative. It's so good to see a PDI not pencil whipped. Uh, I have seen that happen more times than I care to talk about. So very thorough to make sure that like when you get your car something's not wrong with it there's always the opportunity that something weird will happen but if it's right when it gets there here to the dealer and after they go through their check odds are it's gonna be right when a customer gets a car so it's pretty cool He's doing a thorough job which i appreciate so in order to get it to continue with the scan tool he has to do a series of steps such as up up down down left right left right ba start or just turn the hazards on and key cycle it a few times. A little Konami go down. A little Konami one. action. Sometimes it'll go through one the first time. Okay, this that one went through. The first time. Yeah, here. So that's the actual process that he has to do. Yeah. What's cool about having the full scan for GFF is that if we ever happen to screw up coding or something like that, that's all stored so we can go back and change it back to the factory. Okay. Also, we'll do that with VCDS when we get back to my shop. We'll run the deep dive scan with all the adaptations, all the coatings, and basically everything that we can extract from the car, we'll extract from the car. These pups either come with pink or blue. Yeah. So if it comes with a pink, it's a girl. But okay. That's me. That, what he just pulled out, let me, let me show you guys these real quick. Where'd they go? So these are the shipping blocks for the suspension. They went up in the, the shock absorber here. This is probably the most missed thing on PDIs. I got a Facebook memory today of a GTI, a 15 GTI with like 17K that these were still in it. And the whole, everything was destroyed. The boot was destroyed. The uh, bump stop was destroyed. He's setting the tire pressure on this car because they actually come way over inflated from the factory. What was that one at, like 50? Yes. So that was right at 50. And the reason they over inflate them while they're on the boat or while they're at port is so that the tires don't get flat spots. Now, Rad went to go fill it up with fuel. Then the car goes to detail, gets cleaned up. We'll, after that, put on the prop strut and the badge skin stuff and then the track wrap. Get it ready for a test drive. All right, we are going to mod this car up a little bit before the drive home. Unfortunately, nothing super crazy, but if you've ever seen a car with the blue tape that like goes across the hood, we're doing the super cool guy version of that. This is Expel's uh, track wrap, track wrap. So we're gonna just do this like the front, the bumper, and this goes on. Actually, I don't know how it goes on because I've never put this on. Uh, so if we have learned anything from Paul and my company, Bubbles R Us, this should be a disaster. Normally I would prefer to leave things like this to the professionals, but since this is just temporary, this is legit just for the drive home. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this, because, like, this is temporary, right? So this should go on pretty easy. I mean, it's not like we're doing Fast and Furious graphics. It's not like this is permanent. <laughs> it's not like this is color change. Yeah, here we go. See? This is all right. All right. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Not as useless as... I thought four seconds ago. <laughs> oh, 
boy, howdy. Immaculate. What's the opposite of ASMR? <laughs> I feel like that's what we're doing. So when I had the seven and a half wrapped, the guys were like ultra pro and just laid it down like freaking magician. I've learned that I'm good at some things, some things I'm just not meant for. Anything to do with laying film, not for me. There you go, you got it down to a science. I'm a professional now. Can tell like I start to care less and less. Yep. As oh, yeah. we move down yep. the hood. But it's in there like swimwear, baby. So after this, you must feel pretty confident about um, wrapping the Miata, yeah? Oh yeah, I can do it no problem. With I mean, your eyes obviously, closed? I'm an expert now. I can't even tell it's on. I know, honestly. it's like barely, I mean. Like there might be like one little bubble somewhere, but yeah, one single bubble. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, despite the fact that that looks like absolute hot garbage, because I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm not patient, this is something that should be no problem. So one of the big concerns on this generation is that they got rid of the strut for the hood and replaced it with a prop rod. Um, I kind of get it. I, I understand why there's some heartache on it, but luckily Racing Line has a solution for that. So. We are gonna install this. So this is super simple install. It comes with this little ball end that's threaded. This threads right on here onto the hood. Oh, cool. So we'll probably grab a pair of pliers from one of the boys in the shop and snug that down. Then you have the strut, which I forgot which way it went. There we go, I'm refreshed. Wait, I already forgot again. All right, I'm back in. So these are super duper easy once you get the package open. That's been the hardest part so far. So there's this cup on each end and it just snaps in. So you have a snap in right here behind the coolant bottle. And that just boops. Then this goes up here. All right, so lift up the hood a bit. Make sure you're lined up, push it on. Get that out of the way and voila. Let's pop the hood and make sure it opens. <laughs> Much better. I mean, that's pretty all right, I guess. Now we got to round up our temp tag because I'm dying to drive it. So we're going to do that next. Okay. Well, it is time to finally take this old girl on a ride. Comfort mode. Oh, I like the green. Race mode. Race mode is blue as it should be because race car what do we have here oh hey what's happening want to go for a ride sure do let's do it that's fun. I like it. Um, I think it's going to take some getting used to. Obviously, like, it's very different than uh, my 7. Oh, there we go. There were some pops. Oh, no. So we are on our way over to Lindsay this morning. We are going to get ready for our meetup. This car does make some pops and bangs from the uh, from the factory. So that's kind of cool. It makes me interested to see what everybody sounds like with that Miltec exhaust on it. We'll get super pots and ultra bangs.
Okay, so we've just wrapped up an incredible time up here at Lindsay. We had a meetup today. I gave away 99 of the Mark 8 and 7 inspired posters. Huge turnout, incredible, incredible stuff. Amazing cars that drove up. Big thanks to the folks at Lindsay for just making this whole, whole ordeal happen. And probably among the biggest thank yous, Megan from Volkswagen, who you remember, we drove the Mark 8 last year at Wookiees, compared it to the Mark 7. She's been uh, monumental. Is that the word I'm looking for? Instrumental. Instrumental. She's been an instrument and a monument to the Mark 8. Uh, so it's been incredibly cool. Now we have about a five hour road trip home. So let's load up the R and get going. Thank you so much. <laughs> We made it! Okay, we are back after a five hour, 300 something mile drive. My voice is a little bit hoarse from talking to you guys all day yesterday, which was just absolutely incredible. Before we do anything though, I need to remove this track wrap. It, it, it looks terrible. Okay, I think we're actually in a really good place with this car. I got the scan tool running, even though I didn't have the key on when I showed you guys all those faults. So don't worry about all those faults. When it comes to under the hood, there's a few differences that I just wanna point out super duper quick. We now have a sensor on top of the PCV valve. A lot of our piping and stuff is just a little bit different than that third generation EA888. We have this battery hold down, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't like it. I think it looks super tacky and in otherwise a uh, pretty decent looking engine bay. Also, not a fan in any capacity of this floppity engine cover, which is why it's not on the car. Of course, a bunch of other minor differences. I think we're gonna find that a lot of stuff for Mark 7 to Mark 8 is gonna be really close, but just off enough, we can't guarantee that if you buy a 7 one, it's gonna fit on your 8. Also including like this rear sway bar I have from 034 Motorsports. I'm gonna be test fitting that on the 8. It is for a 7 MQB car. So it very likely won't fit, especially because we have all that new rear end stuff with our torque vectoring diff, which by the way, completely changes the way the car drives for the better. It's fantastic. So this is gonna be a really great, more long-term series. You know, fun fact, four years ago to the day when I got this car, I actually flew down to Florida and bought my Mark IV, which is really, really cool. We still have the seven. We're still gonna be doing some mods on the seven. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of swippy swappy of parts to see what actually will fit on the eight over the seven. And there's one more thing I, I gotta touch on, even though this video is probably running a little bit long. I, I'll be honest, I really don't wanna even talk about it. The beginning of 2022 and the end of 2021 are completely bonkers in the entire car market, everything sideways. So I was fortunate enough to get this car at no markup, which was fantastic. Thank you to the folks at Lindsay Volkswagen who don't mark up their cars there's a ton of other dealerships out there that are up, up charging uh, market adjustment, a thousand, two thousand, all the way up to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, which puts this car at sixty five thousand dollars. I don't like it. I, from a dealer standpoint, I kind of understand it, um, but a twenty thousand dollar markup on a forty thousand dollar car is is not okay in my book, and that's why some of these cars sit so damn long. It's because the dealerships mark them up so, so, so much. So big thanks to Lindsay for not marking their cars up. Uh, and that's not just for me, that's for you guys too. So if you're in the area, that would probably be the place I would go. Otherwise, I'm mad excited about this car. We got an exhaust, we got lowering springs, we got that rear sway bar to test. We got some badge skins to cover up this monstrosity right here. But to finish up, this is what I need from you. What other things do we need to talk about? Do we need to dive into technology-wise on this car so that we can build a full, complete index of Mark 8 Golf R information? If you will, please drop that down in the comments. Of course, we're gonna be doing things first to like killing the sound actor, uh, cause it's loud on this car. So we're gonna that real, real fast. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.